it sends a good message to university administrators that you've used your student rights um, uh, at, at your own risk. So, you know, I like to open up the questions. There, there's definitely more speech than I like to do, but particularly when it's a, when it's a smaller group, I, I, I definitely prefer to see what you guys want to talk about. Um, so I feel like I've been talking long enough. Um, so any questions? You, sir. What's your name? Me? Yep. I'm Andrew. Hi, Andrew. Hi. Uh, I was wondering if you thought that if all federal funding of higher universities ended, it would have a positive, negative, or neutral effect on uh, speech codes, free speech on campus. You know, I don't know. Um, that's my honest answer. Uh, but one thing I definitely will say is that um, I think it's an absolute scandal that uh, the price of the universities have gone up so much, and what's actually expanding is, and what you're paying for, is this massive bureaucratic class. Um, the growth in people involved in the bureaucracy have wildly outpaced the, the growth in, in, in instruction at universities across the country. Um, I think it was 2006, where the number of people involved in just administration finally surpassed the number of people involved in, in instruction at universities, and has been uh, skyrocketing ever since. Now, why this is particularly galling is not just because you have to pay $50,000 a year to go to top, you know, top like 50 universities or something like that at this point, but also that this additional money is not going to make your education better. It's going to, it, to justify and to pay this increasing army of, res, uh, of residence life officials <coughs> and um, uh, di different parts of student bureaucracy who pass speech codes and violate student rights all the time. That w w which actually reminds me of a, of a case I didn't mention. University of Delaware. Um, this, this was a case uh, that I just always found incredibly horrifying. And just shows you know, like how poorly universities understand the, the boundaries between them and students. This was for all 7,000 students at the University of Delaware. Um, and it was referred to in their own materials at University of Delaware as a treatment um, for students' racist, sexist, and homophobic views. Now, what's funny about this is that when they actually surveyed students coming in, um, they actually to, uh, to a person uh, 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 tested as actually being pretty damn tolerant. But nonetheless, they have to have this massively invasive intervention, as far as they were concerned, with every single student who lived in dormitories. This included a speech code that placed offensive remarks at, at, at the same level of urgency as vandalism and assault. And included uh, uh, floor exercises, mandatory floor exercises, where you if you believe this about affirmative action, or you believe this about welfare, you have to go to that wall, and that, that wall if you believe the wrong thing, or this wall if you believe the right thing. Basically a public shaming of students with, it, with, with, with views they didn't like. And creepiest of all, they had these one-on-one -on -one sessions, and that's what they were called, with your, um, uh, with your RA, where, you, where you're given a questionnaire that asks you about what races and sexes you would date. Now, the, keep in mind that these are government officials. These are paid by the state of Delaware in order to do this. And it never occurred to them that they were doing anything less than saving the souls of all the students. And a particularly galling example during this was, okay, freshman girl, uh, male RA, one-on-one -on -one session, here's a questionnaire about your sex life. Um, and when asked, when did you discover your sexual identity? Um, the student responded, none of your damn business. <laughs> uh, to which, in response to that, the RA wrote her up for an incident report, and it just kind of shows you like that. That is that that is that looks nothing vaguely like any kind of society I would want to live in. The idea that a government official can actually uh, browbeat you about your sexual identity, and I, I remember going to speak at the University of Delaware and explain it's like, okay, can't you at least understand that like in a previous era that a program like this would probably be used to root out gay students so, so they could kick them out? Like you're at least getting that. And no, they, they, as far as they were concerned, they were saving the world, and therefore they could do whatever they wanted um, to uh, to reform these students that they obviously thought were somehow mentally ill, and the only people who could save them was residents' life. I'm um, sorry, at a, at University of Delaware is one of those. It, it, and, and these programs, they, they try to pop up all over the country. Fire's been pretty effective at keeping them at bay. But it shows you that you know something is very wrong when administrators have such a contemptuous point of, point of view about students and also believe that they have the right to somehow heal them uh, from within with, some, with, with basically pseudo-psychological counseling. Um, I want to answer that. You, sir. Uh, what would, in a capsule summary, no. what 
would I be, have to do to go from yellow to green? Um, I actually, Nico's been working on that. Um, with, 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 yeah, hooray! They, they have a speech zone policy, and it's one of these things where, just to give some background on speech zones, the one that I always like to cite is Texas Tech University speech zone, which, is, which for 28,000 students only allowed one 20-foot wide gazebo on campus for all quote-unquote free speech activities. Um, <laughs> the free State. speech zone? Yeah. <laughs> this is the only area that you can... Right. And, and, and they included in that handing out, yeah. uh, ha handing out papers and, and leaflets. Yeah. And so you couldn't even fit all 28,000 students, like not, not even a tiny fraction of them it's kind of like in this area. This skate park. So they were actually made by court order um, of the Fifth Circuit to recognize the fact that open areas on campus, on a public campus, are presumably free speech zones. Everything that the university wants to prevent, they already can prevent, and they already do prevent in their codes, like kind of like any kind of like disruption of classes, any kind of anything, um, any kind of violence, any kind of vandalism. They always have the power to stop that, but they want to go even further by basically saying, "And you get four feet um, in order to do this." So we're trying to talk them into dropping the the speech zone. Um, and as we, you know, the first one we defeated was at West Virginia University, and we we, we assured them. Drop the speech zone, and we promise you the sky won't fall. There's also a civility code at, um, uh, for the whole that, that system wide. Now, civility sounds like a nice thing, um, but it's constitutionally incredibly clear that <laughs> here, here, here's self government and, and, and meaningful debate and, and, and discussion, and here's the value of being nice. Now, I want, I'm a fairly nice person. <laughs> I'm sure most of you are, and most of you are in your private lives, but. I think most of us would be damned if we had to be nice if it, if it was an issue that we really cared about. That's one nice thing about being a New Yorker too. Is that like it, it, is that New Yorkers always understand that kind of like you have a you you have, you have more than a constitutional right. You have a God-given right to tell somebody to go to hell if they're wrong. <laughs> um, so the civility code, and that's actually that was actually overturned for the entire California State University system um, in a case that Fire was involved with, where students um, at San Francisco State University. Is a very, has a very uh, pro-Palestinian uh, uh, constituency, and the college Republicans there thought it was a very one-sided debate, and they, they didn't like the support for Hamas and Hezbollah. Um, so they made mock-ups of the Hamas and Hezbollah flags and stepped on them during a protest. Now this is a deadly serious protest going on at San Francisco State University. They were brought up on charges of lack of civility, and it's kind of like, whoa, 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 whoa. This is, this is important. This is a live or die issue. This is about terrorism. This is about independence. It's about uh, the idea that you have to be nice during the course of that is just just not uh, just not a limiting factor when it comes to debates that are this serious. So that, so in California, that system got entirely over uh, that that, uh, that civility code got entirely overturned. So and I mean that's we have actually we're, we're going to have something up at the fire website, which is thefire.org. Um, check uh, check it out. Um, because we uh, will have a longer explanation of what the university needs to do to get to a green light, but we'd love to have you guys. So, yes? Did you just call Hamas a terrorist organization? De I said designated terrorist organization. I, what's the difference? Mm. Yeah, that's not me saying it, that's the U.S. government. Screw that. Yeah, no, no that's why I say designated, though, because okay. I'm, I'm not, it, it, yeah, it's designated by the U.S. government to be the territory. To, you, you can disagree with them. Well, I, the, the dictionary disagrees with that. What's that? The, the dictionary disagrees with that. Okay. I just, I just want to make sure what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, it, it, if, you, if you fight for your country, it's not terrorism. And I mean, I, I, I don't I don't have a really good deal with... I'm Persian and us and Arabs are not really getting along at all. But right. the fact that they're, def they're defending their countries for 60 years and now they could they get categorized as terrorism, it sounds well, stupid as hell. Well, okay. D just uh, understand this. You can burn an American flag. Yeah. You, uh, you have a constitutional right to burn an American flag. Yeah. You can certainly uh, st uh, step on the flag of any country you want to you want to step. So that was my question. I was going to ask: um, Is when you when you say like when we're talking about freedom of speech, uh, and because I'm pro freedom of speech, however, I was always concerned about the fact of people misusing the freedom of speech in order to attack and um, to attack. Individuals, you know, uh -huh. the very good example is the the Muhammad cartoon. Yeah, I mean, 1.6 billion people really give a crap about Muhammad. Right, and and they don't even show his face, and 
making a cartoon with this, with this uh, whatever head thing as a bomb or uh-huh. whatever into that or any kind of disrespect. Uh-huh. I mean, that is a practice of freedom of speech, but at the same time, it's like pissing off people. Yeah. On purpose. Yeah, and I think that, that was part of the goal. Yeah, uh, that's great. So basically, what you, what we're getting from this is racism is a, is is basically um, justified through freedom of speech. Wow, I'm really sorry you think that. I don't think that. I mean, that's the uh-huh. conclusion we're getting because that is racism, or uh-huh. that is discrimination in some way. How is it? Is that discrimination? Does that make sense? I'm sorry. It's like wrong. I'm hungry. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> it's not discrimination, but it is kind of like. It will be racism. I'm not. I don't know the, the word on top of my head, but uh-huh. the closest thing that gets right now is racism, uh-huh. basically. And if you have a better word, well, you know. freedom of speech seems like a tool to, to spread any kind of views, racist yeah. or libertarian or anything else. It's just speech is a something that we use to relay ideas. So absolutely, I think speech could be used well, to uh, justify to justify your your racist propaganda. Okay. Absolutely. And then that goes from there. You said I, we kill ideas, not each other. However, yeah. what when those ideas become actions? When people get right. heat up as no, you no, just no, no, no. I, that, that's that, that's completely that that that. that there's autonomy away from it, individuals when you say that. But I have no choice but to kill you because you said something hurtful to me. That's yeah. not that's not a society anybody wants to live in. Exactly. Right. So when we allow, when we don't put boundaries on, on people from killing me, I can say whatever I want, though. Exactly. Okay. Right. What? Okay. Let me say this thing. What if? How about if if I poke you with a needle? That's uh-huh. gonna hurt you. Right, and you're, and see see how you can't actually do the argument that, you, that I think you're trying to make without actually going from a- action to for from word to action, that basically, and that, that's one of the things. That one of the great, one of the great revolutions. Well, making a in, cartoon isn't that action? Isn't that putting it's your thoughts? In, it, oh, okay. Now we're changing words. Expre- expression and speech are considered interchangeable. It's considered the same thing, but it's like this: if I go around, okay, this is this is freedom of speech. Uh huh. Let's say I am against Islam on Muslims. Uh huh. I walk around, and make fun jokes about Muhammad in front of my friends. We have same opinions or not, and uh-huh. this is a hypothetical situation. Like this. Right. We talk about this. That's freedom of speech. No yeah. one can say, "Hey, you, you, I should, you should get locked up for saying that." Mm-hmm. However, when I put that on piece of paper, yeah. and I'm distributing that, uh-huh. and that is be- being around people wow. that is hurting them emotionally. That's amazing, me. Okay, you got it. Okay, blasphemy is probably the most important and like the, the origins of freedom of speech come from in some ways the right to be in some mm-hmm. someone else's opinion blasphemous. Mm-hmm. We have but, to protect that or else or else we lose all yeah. aspects of, of being able to protect ourselves with just the freedom of ideas to but why to do we have forward. to use our freedom? We move on to speech. another question. This is just this may be a discussion you guys can have after because I feel like it's <laughs> okay. not being very productive. I I totally you know I think it's a great discussion to have but I think you know we should give some other people you briefly mentioned freedom of speech in high schools. Yeah. Do you work on that too? Do you think the problem is worse today? <coughs> we, we, we don't. Um, I do think the problem is. That's what we mean by worse. K through 12, uh, the rights of K through 12 students have, have just they've just plummeted. Like pr- pretty much since um, uh, since like the 1980s, um, the the court's been taking back and taking back and taking back sort of rights that were somewhat vaguely granted in the 1970s. It's the kid with the flag on his bicycle. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, and, uh, 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 between, which is just insane. Uh, so there needs to be a fire for K through 12, but given that the rights are actually different um, since, they're, since they're minors and some of the uh, some of the legal issues are somewhat different, you know, fire has to fight its fight. We're, we're, we do higher education, but if someone wants to start, and this is, and, and I, I, I put this out as a challenge, if you want to start a nonprofit defending the rights of K through 12, I will help you. Mm-hmm. There needs to be an organization to, to, to defend K through 12. It can't be fired. We're busy enough as it is, but there, but it needs to, it needs to exist. And what, when, what you need first, in my opinion, when it comes to these kind of things, is someone who really cares about it, and really understands. So definitely, if you want, I'm Greg at thefire.org. If you, if you want to talk about this. Um, uh, shoot me an email. Yes, sir. I have three questions, but I'm going to ask the one that ties in with his. Um, okay. It seems like there's a dumbing down of the free society in education. You were speaking on the university level. Yep. I appreciate that. He brought it up high schools. Yeah. Do you think one is feeding the other because, or do you think the states are feeding them, or do you think it's 
like, you know, I mean, like, where is the problem coming from? Is it the universities are following K-12, or do you think K-12 is looking